Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should go ahead and hit subscribe before you realise how bad this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you may want to reconsider some of your life choices. But in either case, thank you very much for being here. I do really appreciate you being on the channel with me. For today's video, we're going to be discussing hand traps. In fact, it is basically hand traps explained. We're going to be talking about the relevance of them, why they're important, of course, in the game, and what options there are out there. We're also going to be talking how you can combat against them. This is not going to be a super in-depth video, but it should give you some ideas on how to play against or with them as you may need to. This, of course, is largely aimed at returning players to the game or, in fact, new players who may want to pick up on some tips along the way. As a quick note, if you are feeling inspired whilst watching this video and you'd like to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! or even Pokemon singles with a nice cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link to their eBay store in the description, and again, you'll get yourself a nice discount if you choose to use it. But anyway, that's all enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the video. Hand traps is a term made up by Yu-Gi-Oh players. I'm making up terms is something that Yu-Gi-Oh judges absolutely love to describe monster effects that activate from the hand in response to the opponent's actions. There are also actual trap cards that activate from hand in a similar fashion, and this kind of umbrella term somewhat covers them as well. For the most part, hand traps have power crept traditional trap cards that we know and love. The reason for this is simply because they're quicker. And by this we mean they don't take an entire turn to set up like traditional trap cards would. Hand traps are an incredibly important part of the modern game. And if you're someone who's looking to get into the game or a returning player, you'll absolutely need to understand what options are available to you. And with this in mind, I've been an absolutely top chap and gone ahead and made a list of the most important ones you could possibly need to know about. It's worth noting that hand traps have been around since the game's inception, however they primarily started popping up in and around the GX era, so many of these may actually already be familiar to you. The list, however, is not exhaustive, so do bear that in mind. Some old school options for hand traps could be the likes of DD Crow, Gauze the Emissary of Darkness, Karibo, and Honest. Now by today's standards, the majority of these are kinda useless, with the exception of probably DD Crow. But this is a really good way for us to evaluate where they started off and where they are now. There's also the fact that Gore's left some of us with Vietnam-style flashbacks every time we think about attacking directly. So whilst the card may not be particularly prevalent now, it is something you should definitely have in the back of your mind, whether you like it or not. We also have the Ghost Girls. Again, another term that Yu-Gi-Oh! players just made up. We've got Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood, and Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. These are all mostly zombie type level 3 tuners that can activate from the hand and have some really cool effects. These are going to be the ones that you most commonly see in and around the game as of when you play, particularly Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring which is pretty much a staple in every single format. However the rest of these kind of see play depending on how the format shapes up. But on the whole you really want to have these in your collection. Then we also have the trap hand traps. Infinite Impermanence is a perfect example of this, one that can just activate from hand, or of course you can set it on the field like a regular trap card and use it that way. We've got Red Reboot, which is currently limited on the TCG Limited and Forbidden list at the time of recording the video, an incredibly powerful card that just switches off all trap cards for your opponent. And then we have Evenly Matched, a card that people wanted banned for absolutely ages, mostly because they were too poor to own copies of it themselves. Seriously though, this card was absolutely broken and really could have been hit easily on the list. And then finally we have that weird Others category with stuff that didn't really fit into any of those other categories. We have Red Blossoms from the Underroot, another one of those pseudo Ghost Girls that nobody actually plays. No Material, a card that has seen a bit of experimental play but hasn't really taken off in the way that people had hoped. Sereva sees play from time to time but again not all the time, it's one of those weird cards that sort of floats in and out every few formats. We've got Maxi, which is currently banned and splits the Yu-Gi-Oh player base in half. Think of it as Marmite but for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The card allows you to draw a card every single time your opponent special summons to their side of the field. As such, it's become one of those cards that's synonymous with luck sacking the fuck out of your opponent, seeing it during your first turn, and whoever sees it first basically wins the duel. However, there are some benefits to it, but I won't really get into that because there are a ton of videos out there that'll tell you all about this card. We've got Droll and Lockbird, one that sees play again depending on how the format is shaping up. 
Effect Veiler is kind of like a cheaper, not quite so good version of Infinite Impermanence. It's been around way, way longer than Infinite Impermanence. And in fact, sometimes they'll be played in tandem as well, because they both have unique benefits depending on a given scenario. Cyframe Gear Gamma is absolutely awesome, incredibly strong when it goes off, and can actually be used to counter other hand traps. Miscellaneousaurus, I guess this falls into this category, can provide blanket protection for dinosaurs, and Dimension Shift, the one that doesn't see all that much play, but can be incredibly impactful when it's resolved. Again, remember this list isn't exhaustive, but it's just going to give you some ideas of what is out and about there. Ultimately, the hand traps that people choose to play are usually a result of how the meta is shaping up. And in fact, they themselves can warp how the meta goes. Some formats you basically need to run a deck which can accompany many hand traps. The likes of Trickstar and Sky Striker are perfect examples of this. They can run a really small engine that does everything they need and jam in about 5,000 fucking hand traps. There's some formats where just one or two different hand traps can be perfectly fine. And there's also some decks which just choose to play none at all. In fact, opt-ins to just play maximum extenders and hoping to play through any that their opponent has. So, how do we deal with hand traps? Well, there are a number of great ways of doing this. Some hand traps actually counter others. Cyframe Gear Gamma is a perfect example of this. You can also use the likes of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, which is actually used to negate cards like Gamma. It gets a little bit confusing when you see the play happening. It's fucking awesome, though. For some people, though, prevention is a better option than the cure. Cards like Neo Space and Aqua Dolphin can actually just poach them from your opponent's hand. You've got cards like Macro Cosmos, which can actually switch off many hand traps from even working, because the requirement is that they get sent to the graveyard. There's also cards such as Call by the Grave, which can be used on an offensive or defensive manner as a way of switching off your opponent's hand traps. Unfortunately, the card is limited to one at the moment, and many people will choose to play hand traps that can't really be hit by it, but for a large part of the game, this can be incredibly helpful. There's also cards such as Triple Tactics Talent, quite pricey at the moment, but if you can get your hands on it, it's very good. This is a card that actually allows your opponent to go through with their effect, and then punishes them for doing so. In fact, Triple Tactics Talent actually basically gives you access to three banned cards in the current game. Part of Greed, Forceful Sentry, and Change of Heart. So hopefully you guys have found this video informative and hopefully you've liked it enough to have hit subscribe. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. As a quick note, this isn't the only kind of content that we do on the channel. If there is something that you'd like to see and you haven't seen it on here so far, definitely reach out and let me know. I'm easy enough to find on social media and I do read as many of the comments as I possibly can. We do regularly do how to play videos, deck profiles, combo tutorials and all of that good stuff that you could possibly want. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. I do really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.